Charles? That's me. Okay. okay We're talking king plank. Right. See Sweet. how this fits in here? Yeah, nice. <clears throat> Yeah, this is the sub king plank. This is one of the notches in the deck beams. This is nice though when we put those pieces back in and they're boom, painted. You want to paint something, you really want, to, want it to stick. Paint train epoxy is really, really good. What time does your son wake up? 4.30 to 5 every morning. Oh, nice. No matter Thanks, what. Thanks, bud. How old is he? He's uh, gonna be three. We are on the 101, heading west. We're driving up to Ventura and we're gonna stop in to Mayan Hardwoods where we're actually picking up some Formica to redo some of the bulkheads and other parts around the boat and then we'll head up to the boat and we will hook up with Doug and Clint and Rich and see how they're doing here. We're gonna be on YouTube, okay. We're gonna be on YouTube, yeah, because I just locked myself out of the car. Ryan was awesome and he came and undid it. So I'm only a little bit late for my appointment. So thank you, Ryan. You got it. Thanks, he's a new member of our show. <laughs> nice, what are you filming? <laughs> We're doing a restoration, a boat restoration film. It's pretty much just farmland adjacent out here. Ironheart, there they are. The destination is on your right, 2930 Los Olivos. Arrived at Mayan Hardwood Incorporated. See what they got here. All right, we're here at Mayan Hardwood, picking up some Formica. You know, I saw that roll there. Charles? That's me. Two sheets, four by 10. Great. Sir? Sure. Does that look like a color? Yeah, looks like it. It's kind of white, kind of okay. surfy white. We're back on the road and just a few minutes away from Doug's place. So we're running a little late, it's around 10.30 in the morning, but uh, hopefully they won't be on a lunch break yet. Tucked away, it's amazing we brought her back in here. But we did and we'll do it again. Take her out. Ah. Here we pull into the land of lost boats. Some of Doug's other projects. Susanna tucked away in there. All right, April 15th, tax day. There we go, some other panel patterns. After many months, it looks it's like it's all cleaned up, ready to go. Gosh, we should get some wiring in here. Okay. okay We're line? talking king plank. Right. See Sweet. how this fits in here? Yeah, nice. <clears throat> now, what this represents is the short part of the nibs. Around the line there? Yeah. The short part, you mean like the inner? What does that mean, the right. short part? Right. The nib, the nib comes in and then there's a, it's shaped like this, and the outer part's 5 eighths out from there. Okay. So that's what this is all about. So when we actually put the planking on, this will, plywood will be our layout for our plank. So you're saying the little nibs aren't really part of the king plank? They're like a little addition? No, they'll be part of it, but um, when the actual king plank goes on, uh, before it goes on, all the planks will be sitting in here with their nibs in them. Okay. Ready, done. 
Okay. Um, and then we just take this and make a pattern of the king plank and then you glue little pieces on the pattern and then transfer that to the actual piece of wood. See, the planks are coming in here, of course. Mm -hmm. As they come in, they're gonna be nibbed into the king plank. This is the short part of the nib, see it here? Okay. And it comes out like this. Yes. And it'll stop here, see? Okay. See the points? Yes. And so forth as we go. So when we go to cut a plank, we just cut the end to one of these shapes. Bring it to this point here. Okay. Like that. Then we know we're good. Rich, what are you working on right now? Well, I'm underneath here just uh, wiping these down. They're all going to be sanded. I'm going to take this off. Then I can sand these, and then I can finish coat them. Beautiful. So most of these are all painted, huh? Down below, or all painted? Oh, look at that. They're ready for the last coat. Yeah, this is the sub king plank. This is one of the notches in the deck beams. So this kinda... basically sandwiches the plywood and the deck, but not the deck. Well, this is below the plywood. It's flush to the top of the beams. It has a little camber in it. Um, and of course, we don't paint these parts because they get glued to the beams. Right. And uh, the actual king plank is only this wide. Plus the notches. The right. nibs. The nibs come out about here. Okay. So by the time the king plank's going on, in theory at least, your deck should be watertight. When somebody says, I'm going to seal this, I always go, seal, because you can't seal anything from the ocean. You can't seal Mount Everest from the ocean. Yeah, yeah. That's why it snows up there. <laughs> this is the width of the subplank. This is the minor dimension of the nibs. The major dimension of the nibs is out five eighths. And uh, so the only thing left to do now on these is to go down below and mark all the deck beams. Put those pieces back in and they're boom, painted. These patterns we need to save because in a few months when we go to start laying this deck, we're gonna so these all get put together. This is all about the four deck here. And we hang it up. So this is mahogany that was sent to us for a king plank. Right. And it, we're not now using it for a king plank. We use it some, for some finishing wood right. interior. Thanks, Ted. The reason we had to do all this, one of the reasons is because the plywood that was used when they did the deck before just was coming apart. I have no clue why. So when you're doing this kind of work, always use the best materials. And there's certain things you look for, plywood that's certified. This is uh, 1088, for instance, top of the line. Because you don't need that much, but make sure it's the best, and then, of course, lots of Smiths. As you can see here, this is the uh, label of the European conclave of plywood manufacturers. <laughs> and, uh, whoa, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Trickiest part is gonna be the first plank back on, yeah? The first plank, because, yeah. well, it's got, it's full of bolts. There's a bolt every small frame. And then here in the in the chain plate area, there's a lot of bolts that some of them are tapped into the stainless. 
So we have to put the plank on, get it fitted, and then go inside. Well, have to take the bolts out. Go inside and then drill out carefully so we don't splinter the plank. Come back out, counter bore for the bolt. Drive the bolt in, go back inside, tighten the nut, come back, plug it. You have to put a little bevel on this thing? A little, uh, actually a little radius, because the beams have a small radius. Okay. Kind of match it. Just something to soften the edges. When you do hit your head on it, it doesn't hurt as hard. Okay. <laughs> If only we had smell-o-vision. Yeah. We could just smell the delightful smell. So you, you, you don't just pour it in and then just slop it on? <clears throat> yeah, I don't want to make too much of a mess, Yeah, I'm slopping it on. Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. And this really soaks in no matter what. That's much, how much can you put? You put one coat, a couple coats? Just one, one thick coat like I'm right. doing right yeah. now. And I've already wow. done the edges. I can, I can see here on this one how it's just starting to dry right yeah. in. This stuff is amazing stuff. And just dries, soaks yeah. in, and then dries? It soaks in, it permeates all the membrane that, I mean, this first layer and gets in there, and once it dries, it dries hard. And it also is, uh, anything will stick to it really well. Does it, does, it, uh, does it feel like it stiffens the plywood up once you? Oh, no, it won't, you can't feel it. You that, can't that, feel not it in that respect, but. It definitely like it'll make the surface a little harder. Oh yeah, paint. It's, this is awesome. If you want to paint something, you really want the, want it to stick. Paint train epoxy is really really good. First. And how long will you leave it until you paint it? Oh, this we we'll leave it overnight. Overnight. Yeah, it's got to dry completely. This stuff was around <laughs> back in the day. We probably wouldn't be here. What time does your son wake up? 4.30 to 5 every morning. Oh, nice. No matter Thanks, what. Thanks, bud. How old is he? He's uh, going to be three in two months. My kids get up at three in the morning. Three in the afternoon. Three in the afternoon? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. They're teenagers. <laughs> they don't go to bed till three in the morning. Oh, God. Is that what I have to look forward to? Yes. So and he's pretty much caught up on the paint down below. So we've got a, a couple more things to do on the interior. Thanks for bringing the micro, by the way. And, uh, and then we're gonna start looking into lowering the scaffolding. We gotta finish about a day's work up at the upper part of the stem. Remember where the one bulwarks was higher than the other? So we gotta clean that out and glue in a nice shim in there. Just a bunch of little ancillary stuff. Um, we got to do some smiths around the perimeters. But and probably in two weeks, the scaffolding will be lowered. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Two weeks and a day from now. Oh yeah. Yeah, well that's, that's. <laughs> if that scaffolding's not lower, you got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, that scaffolding takes about a day. A day just to move. It's a pain, but. And it's mainly about the ends here, the walk arounds. You know, it's pretty. And of course, dropping it's easier than going up. If it's not lowered, I'll make sure that we're sitting down on it when it drives. It'll look like it's. Yeah. And. All right, well, Rich, thank you, Rich. If we don't see you again, you, ladies and gentlemen, that was Rich. I'll see you next year. Yeah, hopefully, we'll be at a very different stage. Next year? See you in October. Oh, all right, okay, October. Yeah. Uh, back in October? There'll be a lot. Oh, we'll paint. still be here. Well, there'll be plenty to paint then. The hole inside of the boat.